Hello to everybody. This video will show the making of a very realistic lighting system specifically designed for N scale that has a constant light regardless of voltage applied. As you may note from the videos flowing, the system is very realistic. Uh, this is done of course putting in place electronic circuits and electronic components but also adopting other techniques that we will see briefly in this kind of tutorial. Uh, the system as said is designed for N scale but can be adopted easily on any other model train scales. The system is based over four points which we call philosophies. The first one is to have a constant light and no flickering around points, bad electrical connections or dirt. The second is to have a diffused light which is in opposition with the normal direct light coming from the LEDs. And uh, the third is to have something to light which is very nice, so to have uh, uh, fittings which are very close to the original ones. And of course we don't want to see the electrical connections from the outside. Which are the components needed for this circuit? As you may see from the image, there are basically four and we will see them all shortly in details. The first one is a small rectifier. It is needed to rectify the current which is normally polarized coming from the tracks. The second is the heart of the system and it is the constant current regulator. This keeps the uh, current fixed on a specific value regardless of voltage applied. The currents are selected through a resistor and this is normally an SMD form factor due to space limitations. Also we have to select a capacitor which has to be also very small due to the same sp space limitations present in the N scale coaches. It is very important to select a LED with the sufficient dimensions to be easy to solder and also that has a very high power output. So in summary what we need is basically the rectifier, the current regulator, the small resistance, the small capacitor and the high power output LEDs. Let's see in more detail the specs of the current regulator. As you may see it operates in the voltages in line with model trains and it is programmable from a very low current to 10 mA which is in the range we need. Uh, from this table we may see the resistor we have to apply for the desired currents and the current remain the same uh, regardless of voltage applied. In practical terms we can see the results in this video. On the right we have the voltage, on the left we have the currents. If we go on with the voltages from 5 volts to 12 volts we may notice that there is no effect on the current. The current remains basically exactly the same, 1.70 mA. If we go down under 5 volts then the current drops dramatically. In this case the uh, resistor mounted is 39 uh, ohms. The non-flickering effect is given by the very low currents absorbed and also by the, of course, the capacitance uh, uh, mounted on the circuit. Now, in these uh, videos we may see some examples with different voltages. The higher the voltage, the more the autonomy. Uh, this is because, of course, the charging of the condenser is much more efficient with a high voltage. So let's apply some motion now and see the effects on the lights and the, the motion and the flickering. So you may see that the LED starts to burn around uh, uh, 4.85 volts and also the motion, the locomotives normally start around 5 and we may see that the effects are basically that the lights, the, uh, the power of the lights is exactly the same regardless of the voltage as you may see from the video uh, running. You may see that there is also no effect on the flickering, so uh, the, the, the flickering is close to, I would say, zero. And uh, if we go on with the voltage until 12 and even 18 volts, the effect remains exactly the same. In the following frames you will see the connection of the electronic components and how the steering uh, components are connected to the LEDs. The LEDs are connected in parallel mode as you may see from the image uh, now going on. Now before we do this uh, let's have a look on the avail availability of the packaging of the current regulator. As you may see there are two. We will select of course the smaller one which is perfect fit for the end scale uh, space uh, limits. The current regulator supports uh, forward voltages up to 30 volts and 20 in reverse. Now we are going to see how the current regulator is connected physically. And uh, this is the layout of a brand new current regulator. 
and what we need to do is basically we need to cut off a couple of uh, connectors which are unneeded and the final layout of the ready to solder connector um, connectors will look like this and uh, at this point we are ready to solder the resistor in order to obtain the current that we want and here we are back to the scheme as you may see it is very very simple now we just have to pay attention to connect the capacitor between the rectifier and the current regulator as it has to be charged with the high voltages coming now in comparison to a typical uh, serial configuration uh, the system has a far better efficiency the right level of the intensity of the lighting is given uh, by very small currents absorbed in the order between 1 mA and 2 mA. These are selected by the resistors and a typical example would be a 39 ohm giving a current of 1.8 mA. It's very important to select the high power LEDs because only these with these small currents gives us the right level of the intensity of the light. A typical number of LEDs would be 6 but it can be more, it can be less depending on the length of the car. The capacitors used are the smallest available on the market. Now of course we will select the biggest uh, that will fit in the space available on the car. A typical example would be a 220 microfarad. And now let's see how physically the circuit looks like. As you may see, uh, the design is very compact and it can uh, find easy space in the bathrooms of the cars, for instance, or in other places. And uh, at this point, uh, of course, it has to be hooked up to the string of the LEDs. And this uh, hooking may be done uh, via uh, wires, electrical wires, or <clears throat> where uh, the space permits, uh, we can hook it up directly on the rods uh, of, the, of the circuit. If we analyze the specs of the SMD LEDs, normally they have a uh, aperture 120 degrees uh, of light and the, by experience I would say that um, the light in the middle is much stronger. Now if they are mounted normally, so towards the fittings of the car, as the, as the car is made of plastic and the, and the fit, fittings also, you will get a very high reflection from the plastic and this will make an, an even uh, lighting and of course if you want to put a large number of LEDs you will get much higher currents. Now in opposition if you mount them towards the ceiling of the car and the ceiling gets fitted with a very uh, I would say uh, white paper then you would get a very natural and diffused light in all the car minimizing the number of the LEDs and thus the consumption of the current. It is very important that the ceiling is highly reflective. So after, sometimes we have to mask it, but after that we apply a layer of uh, aluminum paper, highly reflective, uh, and then we apply a paper which is very, very white, and I normally use a photographic paper. This uh, is the best for uh, creating a very, very nice diffused light. The LEDs are soldered on an open wired ar architecture. This is for the reason to have the liberty to position them where we desire and also to have the light uh, which is coming from the ceiling not filtered. I normally use 0.5 mm wires, brass wires. Now they can also be soldered of course on a board and placed in the car uh, as, as, uh, as before but uh, when you place the board you will uh, of course be filtering some of the light coming from the ceiling. So. Uh, uh, from my experience it is not advisable. Another big advantage of the system is to have an even lighting on all the length of the coach. Normally uh, the, the light is stronger in the middle or anyway is not even. In this case you light everything including bathrooms and doors. Let's make a comparison between this lighting system and a fantastic model which is state-of-the-art, latest technology, highly detailed, excellent movement and it comes with standard LED lights. Let's start at very low voltages. As you may see, uh, the light uh, of the model is very low and I would say also some reflection is seen. If you increment the voltage, it is much stronger but it is uneven and uh, very reflective. Production of N-scale models has begun in the 60s. We have seen during the years a very good uh, evolution of the quality and the details of the products. Today we have a large range of products which are very good and very detailed. 
I would say that the same has not happened for the interior fittings. They have been available right from start, but they are completely missing of colors and decoration. And this is, I would say, a, a black spot in the production. Now, uh, there are some, of course, exceptions, uh, like Hobby Train, Analysis Models, and others uh, brands have made some attempts to make some, uh, uh, I would say, reproduction of the coloring and the decoration. The perception of the color of a human being is the reflection of the light and the light itself. So it is clear that if the light is hitting a very clear uh, and one color uh, fitting, then you will have a wrong perception. If the fittings are decorated with a mixture of color that represents the original real train, then uh, of course the perception of the eye will be much more realistic. You will see lights that will be very close to the original uh, real trains. Of course, to decorate the interior fittings is not an easy task. We need to dismantle the cars, uh, to look for the right colors, to mask, uh, to paint, uh, to spray, and it takes a lot of time. But on the other hand, with the quality of the lights that we have today, as they show everything inside, it is really a pity to leave the cars with their original uh, interior fittings. Depending on the time, the will and the patient, we may also consider to add some more details in the interior fittings of the coaches. Now this is done basically uh, looking around the internet to see uh, the originals, to uh, project and to design the, uh, the details in a, an application software, to print them of course on an inkjet printer and then to apply them uh, in the right compartments and uh, in the right places. Of course this, this may be uh, an on top but it adds much more realism to the scenes and uh, as, as we said before with the quality of the LEDs and the lights that we have it sometimes may be worthwhile. Last but not least, the electrical connections between the track and the electronic circuit. Uh, many of the connectors and the wires and the met metal parts uh, that uh, make the electrical connections between the circuit and the tracks are very visible from the outside and with a nice uh, lighting system are even more visible. So our objective is basically to uh, go from a situation like this, a standard one, to a situation where you don't see anything anymore. We are going to make a small matrix example. The first thing we'll have to do is to cut off the connector and uh, then to build a small uh, copper connector that will go through the base up to the uh, ceiling through the windows. In this way the connector will be completely invisible from the outside. Not all the car is going to be connected in that way, it depends on the make, on the, uh, on the type of uh, chassis, on the type of, uh, of everything. So you're going to find your own way to build something which makes sense and to make it invisible from the outside. These are some cases, this is a Fleshman one uh, and uh, you see that at this point you have the, the connector ready to solder and uh, this is the appearance of uh, our train uh, SNCF coach and this is again uh, the TEE uh, Fleshman uh, restaurant car and you may see that also in this case we have uh, we have put more than one condenser inside I really hope you found this video interesting and useful for bringing more realism to your end scale uh, coaches and cars uh, for a nice lighting system thank you very much and to the next one